conceptual people talk about all of the elements. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. dropping in on you. I hope everybody is having uh, a good day. Look, I'm going to get right into what it is I want to talk about. You've seen the video, uh, intro video, about supporting the work that we do at the Odyssey Project, whether it's Black Man Lead, whether it's our program for um, childhood sexual abuse, uh, domestic violence, intimate partner violence, intimate partner homicide. Uh, whether it's our research center that has been going strong for 30 years, whether it's our think tank, we've been putting in work. We've been doing this long before social media took off and we've been here. Uh, I'm challenging you to do that. Now, why I'm here. Um, those of you that keep up with what's going on in the media, if you pay attention to social media, I'm pretty sure that you're aware of that. MSNBC released uh, Tiffany Cross. Tiffany Cross was their correspondent, so to speak, uh, connected them to the black community, the person who, quote unquote, would call out racism and, you know, blast white supremacy and the whole nine. Um, it has uh, recently come to my attention that it has gotten to the point now that even even after releasing her, they're doing what they typically, typically do to those that they have used as a means of buffering and keeping blacks at bay with rhetoric, with talk, with symbolism, is when they are no longer useful or they become problematic. They release them and they don't release, just release them, they destroy them. They want to attack their credibility. Why? Because that person holds the truth as to how the system works and what really went on when they were on that platform, when they had access. And this isn't me uh, making a call to ignore what's happening to her. Not at all. This isn't me sitting up taking shots at her in particular. She's one of many that have been put in situations where on the surface it looks like we have a voice. Let me tell you something. One of the first um uh, litmus test that I'm going to apply to anybody that's speaking uh, quote unquote on behalf of black people is who's giving them the mic because who's giving them the mic tells me what the agenda is MSNBC isn't going to give the mic to somebody that's going to truly challenge the status quo as it is now they may give the mic to someone who is on the opposite end of the spectrum of this whole white wing white uh, right wing, uh, left wing thing. If, if if that's the case, then yeah, they'll say okay because they're making points and moving in philosophical, a philosophical direction that serves the interests of something greater. When you sit up and say okay, someone is speaking specifically on behalf of the black community, then there has to be someone controlling it that has an interest in the black community in a positive way. You can't look at major media and say that they are going to platform a real true black media. Uh, uh, 
And that's why we created all black media. That's why there's a rise of new black media, because we have to control it from its conception, its origin, its distribution, and uh, it, you know, in, in every element and component therein. When you are allowing someone else to seat you, you're at the whim of them. And then when you decide that you don't want to play by the rules, they simply extract you from the equation and then take you through a purging process where they tear you down, talk about what you did, discredit you so that you can't come back and tell the story of how things really work because now nobody believes you because you are a, a crook, you are whatever. And I've seen it done. I've seen it done with politicians. I've seen it done with journalists. I've seen it done uh, with athletes. I've seen it done in so many different ways. What we have to look at and say, and another thing that brought pause to me is in studying this story and researching this story. And just in case people are wondering, and I've had this conversation with a few people, uh, I've mentioned it here. I'm not one to jump on the sensationalism. That's why my subscribership isn't up. We like to be entertained. We want the gossip. We want the news. We don't want to be fed meaningful information that can change our lives. We don't want, that's boring. We don't want boring. We want excitement. We don't look at how those who oppose us are growing in strength and power and wealth and say, maybe we need to uh, emulate that behavior. Maybe we need to mimic that movement. No, we are more concerned about how we look to the world versus how we are actually developing and growing. And so when I'm looking at something, I'm looking at everything. So when I do talk about something that is mainstream, something that may be trending at the time, something that involves celebrities, trust me that I've done my research, I've evaluated, I'm not speaking from a place of emotionalism, a place of you know, this person's got more play than me. Almost everybody out there has more juice on the social media platform because everybody out there is willing to play the uh, clickbait game, the, the uh, I'm going to take a shot at this brother game, uh, the look what this chick did game, and these people are the worst person in the world. These black people are the worst person in the world. Pick a side and, and polarize and build off. And I'm not willing to do any of that. I love both my brothers and my sisters. I love the uh, the people from the hood that are still fighting to get out. I love my brothers and sisters who have made a way and found a way out. I love all of you. I love everybody. And unless I identify you as a total traitor, somebody who is purposely working to mislead my people, you, I'm not coming at you in the open because that's not how we resolve things. There are things that have happened to me, the people that you know did, that you're never going to hear about because that's not how you solve things. That's how you create division. But if I come out and I say something on these things, it's because I've looked into it. I saw it and I see something that I think needs to come to the... I'm not just speaking off the top of my head. I'm speaking from years and years of experience in propaganda, years and years of experience in human behavior, years and years of experience in understanding the dynamic, dynamic of how white supremacy works. It was Neely Fuller who said, if you don't understand white supremacy and how it works, everything you think you understand will only confuse you. And I've done everything I can to escape the confusion. I'm still learning, but I'm also teaching and I'm trying to share. I'm trying to empower. I'm trying to get you guys to understand what's going on. Uh, there have been a bu bunch of buffers that we have given a great deal of praise with over the years, all the way through the civil rights movement on up, that we found out later that at that at certain moments may have not been moving in our best interest. Some of them were blindly doing it. Some of them were doing it on purpose. But what we have to do is we have to train ourselves to see when we are being distracted, when we are being fed a herring, when the person that we are being given to has a script and can't go off a of script. And so that means we don't get the full story. We're not getting full representation. This, this has to be aware. When I saw the the length at which uh, Roland Martin was caping for t uh, Tiffany Cross when this went down, it made me understand immediately, okay, this is a person that's pushing uh, a, 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 a dim agenda and pushing. And so they're going to have their opposition from the white rank, right wing, uh, the conservatives, the Republicans, uh, and those in between, that, that that's where the pushback's going to come from. So this is a philosophical 
uh, battle that really one way or another is not going to benefit blacks outside of symbolism because that's all they're ever going to feed us is someone saying this this and you know this is one of those old symbolic power to the people but no real movement and engaging power to the people is a symbol what has to happen is the people have to be empowered people are not going to be empowered through symbols people are going to be empowered through the practicing of certain behaviors the practicing of certain habits the practicing of a, a commitment to learning and to growing. And that's what I've done with uh, the Odyssey Project. That's what I've done with Black Man League. That's what I've done with Music is Life. That's what I've done with the Black Empowerment Community Initiative. Uh, and, and, and the other things that I've done, that's what I've done in my research. That's what I've done. Uh, and I push and I challenge the, the minds that I tap into in our think tank. We have to create solutions. We have to be move and we have to be effective in the way we move. Again, this is an attack on Tiffany Cross. I mean, if you want to support her, if you want to stand with her, she got nailed by a platform that put her out there to do something. And obviously she overstepped the bounds. So now they're trying to tear her down. Uh, maybe she got to a point where she saw and started to really truly and, and passionately feel a certain way and she she crossed the boundaries you can say this but you can't say that you can say this you can say but you can't say that and so she crossed that boundary at some point she became a threat to the very foundation and platform that had gave her the mic and the only way that you can truly speak uh truth to power uh as it, as it pertains to blackness is you have to control the mic it, the mic has to be yours. You have to be willing to step out there and say some things. You've got to have juice outside of these platforms like Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Why? They're not controlled by us. And when we get too loud, as has been proven with me, when you get too loud, they'll just snatch your channel, snatch your profile, snatch it down. And there you are now rebuilding, starting all over, trying to get the momentum that you lost. There has to be other ways. That's why I'm so excited to be a part of what my, my, my friend and partner and colleague, uh, Neo Diora, has done with Alt Black News and Alt Black Media and continues to do. Uh, she is such a piece uh I've been uh, blessed to have her back me, uh, befriend me, and be a part of what's going on all the way back to uh, Ferguson um, and her direct connectivity with King Darren Seals and uh, sharing that information with me so I could share it with you guys. And I, I, I was one of the first after her and Darren to, to yell to the top of my lungs, Black, my, Black Lives Matter ain't us. It's not for us. But it was her voice and Darren's voice that was giving me the inside scoop on what was happening there. And I was screaming it to the top of my lungs, but nobody would listen until what years later. Now that everything's coming to the surface, if you go back and you watch videos, if you go to the site and you read my articles and you look at articles from eight, nine years ago, seven years ago, even five years ago, you're seeing uh, the things I predicted come to fruition because I'm not playing. I'm sitting here and I'm giving you everything I got. And what I'm trying to tell you now is that Tiffany Cross, at this particular point, this is my take on it. How she moves in this, how sure she is in her stance and how she moves in this, in her intent and what she's trying to do, because she is probably going to get the bag. So what is she going to do after she get the bag? Is she just going to become another voice, another public figure that blacks gravitate to because they recognize her, because she's got juice, but she's not really giving food, giving real true food, real true substance? Because that's my concern. My concern is she's going to galvanize some people, but will she optimize that particular dynamic? Once she galvanizes people will she then say this is what we should be doing in any general positive area we should be reading more we should be uh dealing with our mental health uh within the community we should be doing this um so that is my concern my concern is what's her end game what is she about uh, my thing is, I don't want to see any black person attacked and torn down, but I also have to be aware that some have been used 
uh, to keep us at bay, to keep us distracted, to keep us believing that we have a voice. When the truth of the matter is, it takes more than a voice to empower the people. We need voices, but we also need people who are boots on the ground that are touching the lives of the people who have been negative, negatively impacted by the things that we are shouting about. We can shout about those things, but if all we're doing is shouting about those things, they don't care about that. They don't care about their protests. I've told you this a long time ago, that if you don't have economic power, if you don't have an agenda, if you don't have a central focus of where you're headed, what you're doing and how you're going to get there, your protests and your ride accumulate in our tantamount to nothing but a collective temper tantrum. They don't care about your temper tantrum. Tie it up. They don't care about what they want. What they fear is black love, the black family, black unity, black men who are no longer competing with one another. They are looking at what it is we're doing that draws closer together, that provide unified strength. They fear the unity of black people. They fear the collective force of black people. They fear black people becoming aware of how things work. These are the things they fear. So until we grasp that, they will keep throwing faces at us. They will keep giving us Angela Rise and, uh, and, and, and Tiffany Crosses and, 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 and all of these people that we, gavin, we gravitate to but never, ever give leadership. And they will take the voices who have given you uh, their, live, their lives in study and solutions. The Dr. Francis Cress Welsings, the Naeem Agbars, the Joy DeGruz, the, the Amos Wilsons, the Khaled Muhammads, the Rick Wallaces, the uh, Claude Andersons. They will take these people and crush them and squeeze them and make them small. And you will miss the fact that your very empowerment has passed you by because you are focusing on the shiny thing instead of the thing of substance. So when I look at her, I don't have any ill will toward her. I'm observing. OK, you got caught in something you knew when you were in there. You cannot go into this system because you're given the boundaries. You're told what you can't do. Your producers, your executive producers, your vice presidents are telling you that you can do this, but you can't do that. You're having to get stuff OK. Now, so what I'm assuming is they will give her her boundaries and then she will get in front of a live camera and go go rogue. Or they couldn't reel her in on something. And so they decided that she was no longer useful. She was more of a threat uh, than she was an asset. And they do what they do with assets when they're no longer viable, no longer useful. That's why we build our own. That's why we fight. That's why I'm on the gr grassroots. That's why I do the things the way I do. Because I know their support and their money comes at a price of me compromising my integrity and my true nature and my belief uh, of standing for my people. And it becomes about me eating. And once you start to eat from them and you start to live off of them and the living is good and the eating is good, it's real hard hard to correct that and say, wait a minute, I'm off scale. I'm off. I'm off direction. I'm not doing what I said I was going to do because now you, you got a lifestyle. Your children are living a certain way. Your, your spouse is living a certain way. You've got an idea of how things going to look 15 years from now. And you realize if you cut the, you bite the hand that feeds you, that there's no longer a guarantee because our people don't really support like that. They're not getting down like that. It's hard to eat in the black community off of what you do, where you you can go in the white community, stand up and shout the right things that, that black people want to hear, grab, galvanize us, pull us together and take us down a path that leads nowhere. And they will pay you handsomely to do it. And you've got people who've had no problem doing that. And a lot of us have bought into the fact that they were for us and they never were. So, so my thing is pay attention. My thing is, what are you going to do when you get the bag, Tiff? Because more than likely, she's going to get the bag. The people that have come before her who have made similar claims got the bag. Some of the things that they are accusing her of doing, uh, the agenda that the uh, New York Post has out against her is absolute trash. Uh, and this isn't me saying she, she was doing what she needed to be doing for us, but the things that they're accusing her of doing, she didn't do. They just no longer have use for her for whatever reason. I still haven't laid my hands completely on why they're doing it, but obviously she's off the reservation. My thing is, 
we have to be a force within ourselves. That's why I've been pushing so hard to get you guys to donate to what we do because this has been on deck. I don't report to anybody I share and I'm accountable and transparent to everybody within our race, but no white person has any input. No person that isn't for us has no input on how I move. When I share something with you, it's 100% because I believe this is going to empower us. This is going to challenge us. This is going to open up our minds to something we may not have seen a certain way. I'm not here for the pats on the back. I'm not here to become famous. I'm not here for... All of the things that will come out of this for me will come organically because I truly believe in what I'm doing. I'm bringing everything I have to the table. So, again, we've got to be careful on that. So I just wanted to stop by and drop that on you. Uh, again, just pay attention how things fold out. Watch the movement of people. Look at the past. Look at what's going on. But I can tell you this, and I'm going to reiterate this as I close. If a major platform is giving a voice to somebody, you've got to understand that voice isn't for you. They may be speaking about things you care about. They may be seeing things you want to say. But if it doesn't lead to effective change, if it doesn't lead to some things being exposed at a sub level beyond what is obvious to everyone, it's obvious. Oh, man, hey, we got somebody getting shot. Unarmed person gets shot. That's obvious. We see that. You can't dispute that. They're not, that's not what they're talking about. They're talking, they don't want you to expose the inner workings of the system and how it plays out. They don't want to, they don't want you to expose how blacks who own uh, a comparable house to whites are getting appraised at 40 to 50% lower than their white counterparts. Same area, same house, same square footage but getting appraised. And then when they remove anything that, uh, before the appraiser comes out and they remove anything that uh, indicates that they're black and they have a white friend meet the appraiser, the appraisal all of a sudden goes up. Uh, we, 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 there's so many different elements and components about this thing that work against us as a community in trying to accumulate, build wealth and sustain ourselves. They don't want you bringing that out. They don't want you pointing that out. They don't want you uh, looking at systematic racism. They don't want you exposing the new Jim Crow. They, that's not why you're here. You're here to shot racism, look at racism, uh, and get black people wound up and following you, and you say all the right things as they follow you, but actually putting something behind it that says, here's our path to liberation. They don't want that. So that's something to look at. Look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here again. If you believe in the work we're doing, uh, go into the description box, click the link, or if you care to give by the by Cash App, the organization's Cash App account information is in the description box as well. Once again, you guys have an unbelievable remainder of the year. I'm out of here.